morning and welcome back to Almus Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. Well, the FOMC results are out and was in line with market expectations. But before we get into FOMC details with JK, let's recall a few things. US economy was experiencing a relatively strong economy as compared to the UK and EU, keeping the dollar buoyant. At the same time, we had a bear steepening with, uh, where the longer end of the yield curve was rising due to entrenchment of higher for longer as well as issuances by the Treasury. JK, what are your thoughts on the FOMC? Are there any new narratives or change in stance of the Fed you observed? Uh, good morning, uh, Saraj. Yes. Uh, well, uh, you know, the data from other regions took a backseat yesterday with lots of economic numbers from US economy in spotlight, ending with FOMC rate decision as well as uh, Powell speech. And that has had a big influence on uh, all the market segments as well. Uh, in fact, it was a field day for bond traders or rather bond, bond bulls as uh, most tenors uh, rallied uh, very strongly. The robust rally took cues from three distinct drivers. First, it was the uh, November refunding announcement, uh, Treasury reducing the pace of uh, the size increases in the long end. Uh, next, the October ISM manufacturing PM report, PMI report was a uh, uh, big miss, uh, weaker than expected. Uh, market also market pursued Powell uh, more dovish in his uh, pressure, although there was really nothing new and something for everyone. So the uh, yield uh, fell uh, quite sharply, uh, five year plummeted by 12 basis points, uh, then 10 uh, tanked 11 basis points, 4.76%. Now, in fact, actually it's at 4.72%, while 30 year touched 4.943%, uh, all, you know, closing about, uh, uh, you know, 12 points uh, lower. Now, uh, what drove these, uh, in, in, let's look at it in detail, uh, like, you know, the US Treasury increased its planned sales of longer term securities by less than what the dealers were expected. So they are shifting more to borrowing uh, in the short tenor than in the longer tenor. This is mainly led by the fact that longer tenor interest rates or the yields are much higher and treasury, which is already increasing at higher interest cost is uh, you know now uh, switching to short term borrowing. And uh, that's the main relief. And in the overall borrowing about one, um, you know, uh, about one billion uh, was reduced for the quarter uh, starting with uh, November. So uh, that was a short term relief. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, the department is actually working with a temporary windfall of more revenue this quarter and also, uh, you know, the reduction in the fiscal uh, deficit uh, marginally, uh, which was announced the day before yesterday. Uh, you know, uh, it, it shows that the pace of increases in the long term debt auctions uh, will be lower. Uh, so this led to the market actually uh, you know, uh, taking the yield slower on a uh, big relief. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, with deficits remaining so high, uh, they cannot escape borrowing and uh, the spending binge in the US is, uh, is very much on and it's also, you know, election year and um, uh, they are having several ongoing schemes and the war related spending that will not reduce the borrowing. So uh, I feel that it's only a short term relief and it's not going to uh, sustain and uh, yields may well remain uh, supported unless we have a big economic uh, collapse. Uh, then we had the private sector payroll report uh, which modested, uh, rather, which came uh, modestly lower than expected, uh, you know, coming at 1,13,000 versus 1,30,000 that was expected. Uh, last month, it was at 89,000. On wages, ADP said uh, it, it was up 5.7% from a year ago. The, this release comes uh, uh, two days ahead of the Labor Department's uh, non farm payroll report. Uh, which is expected to show an 170,000 increase. Uh, you know, the counts from ADP and the government normally differs substantially, and they did do so in September when the Labor Department actually reported a 3,36,000 increase in the jobs, which is more than three times uh, uh, what uh, we saw in the ADP. Uh, job openings also increased uh, as per the report yesterday. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it showed layoffs also dropping to a nine month low. There were 1.5 job openings for every employed person in September, slightly up from 1.49. So that's again, uh, you know, stronger measure of the labor demand. 
uh, which is uh, uh, seen. Uh, then, uh, you know, the, of course, the quits rate also slightly dropped. That means many people are holding on to the uh, jobs. Uh, then we had the ISM report, the institution, Institute of Supply Management, uh, which is also, you know, coming along with the PMI by SNP. Uh, now, the while the JOLS report suggested labor market conditions remain tight, survey from the ISM show, showed that companies could be holding back on hiring. Uh, so it said the measure of factory employment declined sharply in October. Uh, the ISM manufacturing PMI itself was uh, much lower, um, be, uh, below uh, 50, and in fact, it was uh, 46.7. But I think this drop is uh, pinned down to the strike that was going on in the auto sector, uh, which has since ended, and therefore, this number could not be should not be looked at uh, uh, you know very uh, seriously we, should, we would rather look at uh, uh, you know next month's uh, report uh, uh, so the, these are the main major uh, then of course we had the uh, fomc statement as expected they left the rates uh, uh, you know unchanged and uh, powell of course was uh, very uh, you know uh, uh, very clear that uh, there was no uh, hint, and there was no discussion on any rate cuts here, uh, while uh, the yields remaining higher are, uh, you know, uh, helping to contain the economic activity, uh, they are not sure how long how long that it will stay and how much impact it will have. And therefore, uh, you know, they are sticking to the fact that, you know, 2% inflation is uh, something that needs to be achieved and uh, they, they, they will be uh, keeping it open for the future actions and the data dependent um, and the approach uh, will, will continue. Uh, that is what, uh, it, you know, he has indicated in his uh, uh, speech. And, uh, uh, you know, even he has not uh, uh, directly uh, indicated that the yields are topping uh, and he, he would rather wait uh, for how things evolve in the uh, coming days. So there is no major surprise from Powell's speech and uh, he kept uh, uh, almost, uh, uh, you know, left it to the market to interpret how they wanted and uh, market uh, rather erred on uh, taking it as a dovish pass and uh, that's, that was reflected in the yields, yields which had fallen earlier on treasury refunding announcement took further tumble after his uh, speech. Uh, testing the supports, the yields, uh, stocks, um, you know, uh, where which, which were falling earlier in the last month, uh, uh, took further support yesterday after the yields well, and uh, that you know, uh, recovering most um, much of the losses of the previous week uh, as well. Dow gained 0.67 uh, percent, while S and P and Nasdaq were more than one percent higher. The global index was about to some point seven percent higher on the currencies. Uh, Though, uh, in my view, Fed remained neutral and kept door open for more action if needed. Currency market continues to perceive that peak rates are in and uh, sold off dollars once again. Although, uh, in, in terms of Euro and GBP, it has remained within the uh, range that we have seen of late. The end recovered part of its losses with one eye on Japanese officials who were more vocal on their intervention. In fact, if you want to uh, uh, look at uh, uh, who no, if you have a contest of who sends the most conflicting signals to the market, I think the Japanese authorities will win it hands down uh, because just a, a day before they announced a low change, but then relaxed their grip on the uh, higher yields. But as the yield touched 0.97%, they came and announced a, a bond buying program. And it shows nervousness on their part that it should not cross 1%. At the same time, they were talking very tough on uh, yen. So if, if you really want to rein in the yen, it is better to let the yields rise, but uh, their actions are really uh, something that the market is not able to read consistently. Uh, therefore, the yes, there was some profit taking on the long dollar yen positions, which uh, uh, came down to 150. Yeah, but seems to be well supported at those uh, at that uh, psychological level. Overall, uh, the dollar index needs to uh, you know come below one point uh, one hundred and six uh, to you know uh, infuse some more uh, uh, bearishness on the dollar or euro to cross one point zero six eight zero, uh, which will add to uh, dollar bearishness. Uh, uh, I think the best performing G seven currency has been the. Aussie dollar, which uh, actually takes cues from the fact that there can be a one more rate rise in uh, Australia based on their inflation and also the uh, other data on retail sales that we have seen recently. Uh, well, on the rupee, we had a surprise last minute action uh, when it rose, uh, when the USDNR rose to an all time high of 83.33. 
in onshore trading hours, but that happened minutes after the bank's uh, trading hours. Still, it did not it did not invite. Uh, uh, sorry, it, it did invite some uh, stop loss buying from some players, although there was no major follow through beyond 83.35, where we feel uh, more stop losses would be located. And because of thin market conditions, uh, uh, most people remain sidelines awaiting uh, results from the FOMC as well. Uh, post the fall in US yields and Fed statements, uh, rupee participated in the dollar's retreat and uh, recovered to 83.24, almost restoring the status quo of the last uh, several weeks. I wonder if you are going to see a uh, lesser intervention from RBI in the coming days. As uh, yesterday was the first time we saw them withdraw from the market in onshore market, although it was for a short duration. If they do, rupees should see a wider range and fall or rise along with the general dollar trend. Uh, we should still wait and see the uh, central bank actions in the coming sessions to assess uh, the same. Uh, let's also be aware that flows are still not in favor of the rupee. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, bond bulls, it seems, had a good day with the yields dropping. And uh, if you look at the ISM manufacturing PMI, it was weaker than expected, much weaker than expected. And uh, it, it didn't help that markets interpreted Powell as a uh, little dovish. Uh, this might also be, the fall in yields might also be because we are, shift, uh, we are seeing a shift in the borrowing patterns uh, to contain more of short-term papers rather than long-term papers. And of course, Paul mentioned that uh, they will be taking a data dependent approach. And uh, as I said before, markets considered it as a as somewhat of a dovish pause. For INR, we uh, saw a surprise uh, last minute action yesterday, just after the close of the onshore markets. It went as high as uh, 83.33. And then uh, after the FOMC, due to the general dollar weakness, it retreated. That's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.